Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today we are going to have a look at whether we can use letrozole and stimulate the ovaries and use that protocol to improve the chances of pregnancy for a frozen embryo replacement cycle in women who have polycystic ovaries. So now in brief let's look at what protocols are there for frozen embryo transfer and so you have a natural protocol trying to work with ovulation. You have a modified natural where you trigger ovulation. You have a stimulated cycle in which you give letrozole or gonadotrophins to induce ovulation and then do a frozen embryo or you do a medicated cycle. And a medicated can be a down-regulated cycle where you shut down all the signals and or you add estrogen and progesterone to develop the endometrium. So that's a, a wide area or, or, or which we can do frozen embryo replacement cycles. So what is the advantage of using artificial protocols where you put estrogen and progesterone? They are very simple to use and they are convenient for us. And the disadvantage is that there is a risk of thrombosis, there is a risk of extremely high amount of estrogen and progesterone and you can't stop it. You know, pregnancy occurs and you keep continuing it. And sometimes, in some cases, you see an inadequate endometrial thickness and that's true. And you'll see some women who will have high doses of proganova who will have thinning of the endometrium. So what is letrozole? And letrozole is a third generation aromatase inhibitor. It maintains normal central feedback. It has a short half-life and it may increase markers in endometrial receptivity. So again, this is a retrospective study used in infertility patients with PCOS. They were undergoing the first cycle of frozen embryo replacement and they excluded cases of recurrent miscarriage, uterine malformations and pretreatment with the pill or uh, you know, genetic screening of embryos. So what was the protocol? So 5 mg of letrozole from day 3 which is spontaneous or induced for five days. If the follicle was 14 millimeter, then monitor every two days and then trigger at 17 millimeter. If the dominant follicle was less than 14 millimeter, then you started stimulating the ovaries with 75 of HMG and then increased it till you got to a follicle size of 17 millimeter with an E2 of 150 picogram and a low progesterone and then triggered. Now what happens if there was a spontaneous LH surge and if the LH surge took 20 or more than 20 international units per litre and doubled over the past two days then HCG trigger was given. The embryo transfer was done on the fourth day for day three embryos and on the sixth day for a, bl for a blastosis so about a day earlier and, and this is one of the trickiest parts that if you miss the LH surge, you know, your cancellation rates tend to rise. So that's one of the reasons why I generally tend to avoid doing a completely natural cycle because you tend to have a very fine window in which the LH surge can be detected. Now, if there was no LH surge, then HCG was induct, injected at 9 p.m. and embryo transfer was done for a day three embryo on day five and on a day five embryo on day seven. So we use the uh, protocol for estrogen and progesterone. Two milligram estrogen was started on day two or day three, endometrium of more than seven millimeter, and the progesterone was used as cyclogest pessaries. Again, a day three embryo transferred after three days of progesterone, and day five embryo was transferred after five days of progesterone. So a single embryo re replaced in approximately the same number of cases, and a double embryo was replaced in almost 90% of cases. If you look at the endometrial thickness, the endometrial thickness is slightly better in the letrozole group. If you look at the implantation and the miscarriage rates and the live birth rates, it seems to be very much similar, but the miscarriage rates in a letrozole cycle were slightly reduced. And this has been shown in a few more studies. 
So when you look at the previous studies, and almost all the previous studies were tended to have we limited with a smaller number of, of cases. One study showed a higher live birth rate and a lower miscarriage rates. And the Japanese tend to use a lot of this and there it showed a higher odds to a live birth rate and miscarriage rates. So if you again looked at this current study, it showed the live birth rates were very much statistically similar, but the miscarriage rates were certainly less in the letrozole group. So what do we see in these cases? You see that when you give letrozole, you give, get a slightly thicker endometrium on the day of embryo transfer. Again, what happens with low with estrogen leading to low estrogen, it upregulates the estrogen receptors and increases sensitivity to estrogen rise. It may improve endometrial receptivity. So if you have a look at the two lectures I gave on endometrial receptivity with clomiphene and letrozole, and letrozole seems to have, may improve endometrial receptivity. And again, it has a short half-life compared to any other drug. So by the time the embryo transfer comes up, letrozole has gone. This study had a large cohort size. And even though it was retrospective, the large cohort size itself tends to give us some indication. And in fact, what we think is, is letrozole safe? And the answer is yes. Can it be used in women who don't tolerate Proganova or high doses of artificial estrogen yes you can use letrozole do you compromise on results the answer is no and thus i think you can start using letrozole and the only thing is you'd require to follow it up more closely next is do you think we can replace it i don't think the time has yet come again this is again generally in polycystic ovarian syndrome we don't know about unexplained as yet and the data there is still more confusing into the use of letrozole and in fact even in ovulation induction so what i would suggest is the study does give us an idea that letrozole is good in pcos patients for a frozen embryo replacement cycle and it's worth giving it a try especially if you're seeing that your dr drugs are not giving you a good endometrial thickness thank you very much i hope you like this talk and if you do, please share it and let it uh, let knowledge spread. And I think as we tend to get involved and start discussing about more papers, it allows us to uh, just spread the knowledge a bit more further. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye.